1986, the eruption changed. As, this, as the volcanologists at that time were out waiting for the next high fountain to start, the conduit beneath Pu'uo ruptured and a fissure extended down reft and began feeding a new style of eruption. Rather than producing these episodic lava fountains, the eruption began to erupt lava almost continuously. A much lower eruption rate, but at an almost continuous fashion. Instead, you had, instead of this nice, tall, pointy cone formed by these lava fountains, you had what we call a lava shield, a low mound of lava produced by these nearly continuous effusion of Pahoehoe lava flows. And this little mound, which we later named Kupainaha, formed a lava lake at its summit. Now, the lava lake here fed down through this little channel and entered a lava tube. And the other key thing about these Pahoehoe flows is this, because they were Con almost continuously active and extending downslope very slowly, they were able to develop lava tubes with, within the flows themselves. This is a big change from, from Pu'o and the Aa flows. So here's Pu'o back here, a nice pointy cone. Kupainaha, very low. You can barely pick it out on the skyline here. Real low feature. Uh, we call it a shield, as I said, because it's shaped like a Roman soldier shield laying on the ground with the, the convex side up. So as the flows extended down slope, you had lava tubes form within the flows, and lava tubes will insulate the lava itself and keep it from cooling, and this lets the lava travel farther. And so the flows, though it took several months, were able to reach down and actually cut the highway, which you can see part of it there, comes through here, cut the highway, enter the ocean along the southeast coast of the Big Island of Hawaii. Now this is very important because Along the coastline is where most of the people live. And so this is, marks the period of the eruption where we began destroying lots of houses. I mean, yeah, there were some houses destroyed up here in Royal Gardens, but that was a pretty, um, that was a money-making scheme anyway by the developers. So um, <laughs> most people live down here along the coastline. For those who didn't know, there was also used to be an eastern entrance to the National Park with a visitor center. In 1989, that visitor center was destroyed. And in 1990, lava flows from Kupainaha actually turned and moved toward the east, swept in, and devastated the community of Kal Kalapana. Here's those flows coming into town. Eventually, this whole area became buried by lava. After this period, the flows began to wane, and eventually those flows stopped in 1992. And here in red are the flow, is the flow area covered by flows that erupted during the period from 1986 to 1992. We had flows from Kupainaha, and then this flow was actually when the fissure first opened up that began to feed Kupainaha. You can see most of the flows came down slope, reached the ocean. Most of the time those flows went into the ocean, and then we had flows that swept over and hit Kalapana, which sits over in here. This was the most destructive part of the eruption. And in total, there were 168 primary structures destroyed. When I say primary structures, I mean if there's a house with a garage, we're just counting the house, that sort of thing. In 1992, the eruption changed again. OK, let me step back for a moment. I also want to say that during this period, while Kupainaha was active, this is when the crater first formed on Pu'uo'o. So here's the, the, the top of Pu'uo'o in 86, after Kupainaha started, very quickly this top began to collapse and form this fairly large crater, which is a few hundred meters long at this point. And by 1987, there was actually a small lava lake at the bottom of this crater for most of the time.